Hi, I'm Erica George, Director of the Tanner Humanities Center, and it is my pleasure to introduce the upcoming rebroadcast of National Theatre Live's performance of Lorraine Hansberry's Les Blancs. So I wanted to spend some time talking with you about the play, uh, the playwright and the director. It's a spectacular combination and should be a wonderful performance. So um, I also teach in the College of Law, where among other things, I teach civil procedure and incorporate Lorraine Hansberry's plays into some of the case law we cover. Um, little known fact about Lorraine Hansberry, her most popular play, the one that put her on the map, that made her the first black woman to have a play on Broadway, A Raisin in the Sun, um, was based on her childhood experiences in Chicago. Her father was a plaintiff in a lawsuit that the NAACP brought to contest racial discrimination in housing in the city of Chicago. Um, so coming from that legacy, the fact of life that informed much of her later work, contested terrains of race, and sexuality and inclusion and exclusion in Les Blancs, um, in French, the whites, is a story that takes questions of race and reckoning and challenges to the African continent. Um, she's created a fictional country on the brink of conflict to throw off colonial rule. Um, she tells the tale through the protagonist, um, an African, who is descended from the leader of the nation um, and a colonial mission. Um, the conflict occurs when he returns to his home country to bury his father and finds a country that's really on the brink of exploding. Um, he returns home to find his younger brother struggling with addiction, his older brother betraying um, his commitments and the protagonist is challenged with the worlds that he inhabits, the desire to return to Europe where his family is now residing, or to listen to the call of the people that he's come from um, and the liberation that they're demanding. The play begins with a journalist that travels from the United States to this fictional nation to cover some of the change and the conflict. And it's in conversation with the Christian missionaries that established um, settlement there and education and civilization. So she takes on these themes that were quite of the moment of the time. Um, this play is written and performed in 1970, 11 years after her wonderful success of A Raisin in the Sun, and the play was unfinished. Um, Lorraine Hansberry tragically died as a young woman of pancreatic cancer in her 30s. So the manuscript was finished by her husband after her death. Um, the production that we will be seeing from National Theater is a culmination of her original writings reinterpreted by a South African director. Um, Yael, oh. The South African director that reinterprets Hansberry's play is Yael Farber. Um, she grew up in apartheid South Africa and was no stranger to racial tension, racial discrimination, and segregation. So in her hands, she reinterprets this work. She got permission from the Red State to look at the original manuscripts. Um, she takes in dialogue, takes out dialogue, and in conversation with um, Lorraine's estate, adds in music, adds in the live music of Africa, adds in more narrative, and really helps to reimagine and bring this play to life um, in a new and interesting way to rave reviews um, at the time. You will be seeing a 2016 um, recording of the play. This is the first time in a long time that this play has been done. When it was initially shown in New York in 1970, James Earl Jones played the protagonist. Um, there's some wonderful actors in the version that you will be seeing. Um, other things about Lorraine Hansberry, as we close out Pride Month, um, late in her life, she 
was open about her sexuality as a lesbian. She constantly worked to try to increase understanding um, through her work, her activism or her craft for actors and the plays that she brought to life. In a 2016 interview with the New York Times, director Yael Faber explains um, the contrast between the early work, A Raisin in the Sun, and the unfinished work, Les Blancs, in this way. She describes Hansberry as treating a raisin in the sun as an exercise with herself, and that makes complete sense if you're the child of a person who spent much of his adult life battling legal discrimination in court, it's going to leave an impact on you. But with the later work, um, Yael explains that Hansberry was desperate to explore a more radical thread. She's reaching for something more expressionistic, um, less an exercise in self, but more to deal with reckoning. And um, Farber talks a lot about reckoning and her reinterpretation of this play. Um, and writing then, making the point that a reckoning hadn't really occurred when we talk about or don't talk about race um, in the United States and beyond. And I think it's particularly interesting to have a South African um, situating this work in a new way. And particularly in this moment, as we are reflecting on um, global uprisings. So we are going to look at a play that envisions a particular point in time coinciding with anti-colonial movements across the African continent, coinciding with the birth of new nations on the continent and in South, South Asia as countries are coming into their own and what that struggle looks like, both in terms of family and nation and identity. Um, so there are some interesting family dynamics to look for in this play. Um, pay attention to the three brothers and the contrast between the ways in which they approach the world and their origin stories. Um, also pay attention to the music. This was not an original part of the first presentation of this play, but I think it's interesting that that element is added, um, particularly when you appreciate that Lorraine Hansberry is said to have been the inspiration for Nina Simone's um, amazing song, Young, Gifted, and Black. So she was young, she was gifted, and died young, far too early, left this play behind, and it's been wonderful to see new generations pick up what she's left, move it forward, um, and stay true to the intent of exploring these eternal questions of liberation, of conflict, of um, colonialism, and ultimately of obligation and duty to family, to yourself, to your nation, however that is defined and how it comes to be redefined. So I wish you well. I hope you are staying safe and healthy and I hope you enjoy this production. Please let us know what you think.